everybody and welcome back to Circa Media Youth Circus. We're going to be doing some video classes over the next few weeks to get you ready for our next term which starts on the... 19th of April. On the 19th of April we will be back in our spaces with all you guys teaching you all the skills again. We'll have you up on our trapezes, we'll have you on the tight wire, on the walking gloves, on the roller bowlers, we'll have you juggling, we'll have you doing some bent knee acros, some cool aerial hoops, some silks and all the other fun stuff that you've been missing over the last while. We can't wait to have you back in the space with us. And these classes are just an opportunity for us to get back in touch with you, make sure you're ready to come back and learn all these skills. Most of you know me, I'm Alan, I'm the lead tutor here. I'm here today with... Rachel, and I work here on the Youth Circus. And today we're just gonna go through some of the basic skills again. This is the first of our welcome back videos. So we're gonna be hitting, we're gonna be doing some nice warm up, a nice stretch. We're gonna look at some acrobatic st static shapes. We're gonna look at some basic juggling again, just to get that back in your heads. And then we're gonna finish up with some partner acrobalance that you can do with your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, or anybody else who's in your bubble. Uh, for today's class, basically all you're gonna need is some space to work in. Maybe we've got our mats here, so maybe if you've got a yoga mat at home, you can put that down on the floor, or some nice carpeted floor is good as well. Make sure the space around you is clear, because we will be doing some jumping and maybe a little bit of running on the spot as well, so nothing breakable around. I'm going to be doing some juggling. I'm going to be using some fruit and some other objects for juggling. So if you've got juggling balls, have them nearby. Or if you have some oranges or apples or something you can juggle with, some tennis balls, have those nearby as well. And we might have some time to do a little bit of balancing again. So maybe if you've got a wooden spoon or a ladle in the kitchen, if you've got some nice peacock feathers hanging around your house, you can use those as well. Or even just a plastic bag. So, let's get started with a little bit of a warm-up to get our blood flowing. So, as always, we're going to start with a little bit of jogging on the spot, just like this. And then let's run the spot as fast as we can for 10 seconds. Go! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 9 and a quarter, 9, 10. And just some bounces, and then let's do some star jumps. Our jumping jacks, don't write us emails <laughs> about the difference between star jumps and jumping jacks because we don't know. Nobody does this mystery. And everybody's favourite, some spotty dogs going forwards and backwards. And some some crossover crunches that start challenging those bodies getting our coordination up and running. my heart racing anyway. So, let's sort of activate our joints, get ourselves ready for some circus. So, standing on one foot, moving our ankle. And we're going to bring that up to our knee. And up into our hips. If you need to, you can hold on to a chair, another human being, a wall. And then let's do the same on our other leg. Ankle. Knee and up into our hips. Great. So, onto your hips. Let's do some nice big hip circles. Everybody's favourite. Make them as big as you can, then change direction. Make them even bigger. Nobody's looking at you. You're at home. Be as silly as you want. Let's do some figure of eights. And do a little hip shake just to finish off with. And then let's do some nice shoulder rolls, get those shoulders working. Unfortunately, we're not going to do any aerial today, but it's still really, really important to keep our shoulders nice and well. And we'll go the other way with our rolls. And then we're going to bring it into our arms, nice big arm circles going one way. And arm circles going the other way. And uh, now it is time for everybody's favourite. So those of you who are regulars in our class, this should be nice and easy for you. If any mums and dads are, we have any new people on the video, this might be a bit trickier. But don't worry, give it a go. Both hands up in the air, one forward, one backwards. So if you find this difficult, you can start at the top and do it in quarters. 
so that you can think about each position as an individual unit and then try and stitch them together into a nice smooth circle and then we'll change direction as well just like this nice and then we're going to give ourselves a little hug and we're going to open up and hug everybody else who's watching this video and thinking about getting back in the spaces and doing all our fun circusy things again Okay, last little bit of activation. One of the most important ones, especially if we're going to be going upside down, is going to be our neck and our head. So, first things first, let's we're going to suck our head all the way back. Give yourself a nice double chin like this. And then you're going to stick your head all the way forward. And then back, double chin again. Make sure your voice is a little bit strange. And forwards. And then back into a neutral where it normally rests. And then we're going to try and go side. To side without moving our shoulders. So I can feel I'm moving my shoulders a little bit, but try and move them as little as possible, try not to cheat. And then we're going to go circles all the way around. So I bet myself and Rachel look a little bit silly now on your TV or computer screens, but that's okay. Cool. You look silly in person as well. As you might have heard John over there, some of you might remember him as a teacher as well. He's here supervising <laughs> to make sure myself and Rachel don't do anything too crazy online. So let's have a quick stretch. So let's do a nice lunge. So you can keep your hands on your front leg like this if you want. You can even turn into a back bend and reach your hands up to the sky and look up. If this is all too difficult for you, you can put your back knee down on the ground and point your foot behind you. And that's a little easier to balance as well. But remember, keep that front knee over your foot. Like that. And then we'll come back up again. Step forward and step the other leg back into our lunge again. Knee up or knee down, whichever you feel most comfortable with. And again, if you want, we're going to turn into a little bit of a back bend up at the sky. Like that. Excellent. And then we're going to come down to our bellies on the floor, point our toes behind us and do a little bit of an up dog or a cobra. I'm never sure what the difference is between either of those. That's okay. Or a circus seal. Or a circus seal, yeah. It's been so long since I've done circus, I've forgotten the circus names for these things. And then we're gonna crouch backwards into a panting kitten. Or a child's pose, if you're pulling. And then everybody's favorite, we're gonna go on all fours, hands and knees. Knees under our hips, hands under our shoulders. Nice straight arms with our fingers stretched out. And we're going to do some happy cats and some angry cats. So we're going to push our belly down, look up at the sky in a nice happy cat with a big smile. And then we're going to suck our belly button up to the roof, tuck our nose in between our arms into an angry cat. And then back to a happy cat again. And an angry cat. And a happy cat. And then, as I know you all want to do, let's do a nice big disco cat. Big circles of the head and the belly and changing direction. Like that. Now I'm going to turn sideways so we can do this next one. A step and pull forward. So we're going to tuck our toes under and then we're going to push our bottoms all the way up into the sky. Bring our nose towards our toes and try and push our heels as close to the floor as we can. If you're up here on your tippy toes like this, that's okay. Just try and stretch those toes all the way down. And then we're going to walk our hands back to our feet, bend our knees a little bit, and roll up to standing. And then we're almost done. We're just going to do a quick side stretch on each side. We're going to fold the arm across in front, stretch out those shoulders a little bit, and on the other side as well. Hands together, palms together, pushing our wrists down and our elbows up to stretch our wrists out. And then the backs of our hands together, wrists up, elbows down. Give them a little shake. And then last but not least again, just our necks. We're going to look over one shoulder, try and look behind us. And then we're going to look over the other shoulder, try and look behind us on that side. Back into the middle, one ear on one shoulder. If you want, you can stretch that opposite hand towards the ground and put the hand on the same side, just on top as a weight, but don't pull. And then we're gonna go same on the other side, hand on top as a weight, stretch the bottom hand away down to the floor, like you're trying to pick up some sweets that are just out of reach. And then we'll roll our head all the way around and all the way back. 
and that is our warm-up band stretch ready to go. I'm going to hand you guys over to Rachel now for a few minutes. She's going to show us some nice shapes that we can do with our bodies now that they're all nice and warmed up. Rachel, over to you. Okay. So, the first shape we're going to do is a Y stand. For this, it's going to involve balancing on one foot. Some people find it really helpful to hold onto their ear, but you can also hold onto your hip or have your arm out to the side. We're going to take one foot up, we're going to grab the outside of our heel with our hand, and we're going to try and keep pushing our hip towards the floor so I'm not going to let it come up like that, otherwise I lose my balance. So that hip's staying towards the floor, and I'm going to try and open up my leg into a Y stand. If you're struggling with that, you can get um, a piece of fabric or a scarf, and you can put that around your foot. Hold onto the fabric and do the same position, but your foot is a little bit further away, so it's a bit easier. The next thing we're going to do is a bridge. So for this, there's two ways we can go into it. We can start on the floor with our feet and our legs bent. I'm going to lie back. I'm going to place one hand above my head and the other, and my fingers are facing back towards my shoulders. When I'm ready, I'm going to straighten my legs and my arms and push my tummy towards the ceiling into a bridge. The second way you can go into it is in our crouch position. You can take one hand behind you, have your fingers facing towards your bum. The other hand is going to come all the way around to the opposite side of your body. I'm going to stretch and reach until that comes to the floor. And I can come out of it the same way. The third shape we're going to do is the splits. For this, we're going to prepare by going into a lunge and keeping our back leg really straight. Once we've done that for a few seconds, we're going to place our back knee on the floor and straighten our front leg. Then, we're going to try and touch our knee with our forehead. But only go as far as you can with it being comfortable. From here, we're going to try and keep our hips square and slide down into the splits. If you're struggling with that, you can get two blocks or two cushions or two large blocks and you can place them either side of you and hold on to them. This will take some of the weight off of your legs. And then just slide down as far as you can go. And the last shape it involves being in our circus seal. So we're going to start on our tummies. We're going to place our hands on the floor. And we're going to push our chest up towards the ceiling. Once you're up as far as you can go, we're going to add an extra challenge. And that is to bend your legs and see how close you can get your feet to your head. And that's it for our solo acro positions. Rachel, any tips for somebody who's not very flexible like me for that last one, our circus seal? I'm trying to reach yep. behind us. I can only reach uh, <laughs> uh, as far. Okay, so first of all, what you can do is place just your forearms on the floor, and then we're going to stretch our chest forward, like as if there was a string pulling your chest towards the ceiling. And this should really help open up your upper back. Once you've done that, then you can slide your hands back and see if it makes your actual seal any easier. Mm. What you can also do is grab onto your feet and just uh, bend it in towards your bum and that should really help stretch your legs out. I think there's a slight difference. Yeah. <laughs> you need to do some more stretching. And I also think. really think about pushing your hips into the floor. Or you could use the scarf again ah. and I'm going to place one round one foot and I'm going to place the other round my other foot and from here I'm going to pull them up into this position and that helps me to get my feet towards my head or work up towards it. Nice, that's really good. Jono, would you take a note for next week's video? I'll be doing that move, no problem, I'll stretch.
Okay. Okay, boys and girls, I am going to do a little bit of juggling with you now. So if you have some juggling balls, go and grab those. If you have some oranges or some apples or some tennis balls or some cricket balls, anything round, or if you watched one of our earlier Youth Circus Home Edition videos where Alice showed you how to make your very own juggling balls, go and grab those now. I'm just going to get some of my props and I'll be back in just a second. So, as you can see, down here we have all of our juggling balls ready and waiting for you coming back all each individually sanitized by Jono over the past furlough period. <laughs> so, I'm going to leave those there. Here I have some fruit to juggle with. So I've got three oranges from my own personal stash. I also brought an apple with me as well. So even if you have objects that are different sizes and weights, you can still juggle with them. It'll be a bit trickier, but it is quite possible. Um, indeed, if you want to give yourself a big challenge, three objects that are all different weights. This is my reasonably clean sock that I've rolled up into a bowl. Don't worry, Rachel, I won't make you touch that. I've got my orange and my apple, so let's see if I can do this. So it is a little bit trickier, but it is still possible. So, for those of you at home who haven't been to a certain media class yet, you haven't gone over the basics of juggling. And for those of you who have been here as well, we're going to quickly go through the basics just for today. So we're going to start with one object. I'm going to use my orange here, which hopefully you can see. Remember, when we're juggling balls, we hold our hands like this. So elbows tucked in, hands palm up, and our object that we're going to juggle resting in one hand like this, like we're holding it in a cup. And then we do a little scooping action. So we start outside our hip, we come in towards the middle, like a scoop, and then we throw the ball or the object up in the air and try and catch it in the other hand. Now hopefully, on the video, that looked like I didn't move my hand, my catching hand very much. And that's what I was trying to do. In juggling, remember that the throw is more important than the catch. So if you do a really, really nice throw, your object will land in your other hand and it's a nice, easy catch. But if you're kind of throwing a bit weird and wonky and you're having to catch like that, imagine there's two other balls or even more in this pattern that I'm trying to catch now over here. And so it all comes back to having a really, really nice, consistent throw from one hand to the other. So we just practice with one object, keeping our elbows from moving as much as possible over and back. And as you can see, ball is going up roughly around forehead height. If we're juggling down here, that is really, really easy, but there's not an awful lot of space to add in any more objects into that pattern. So we want to throw it a little bit higher. If we throw it too high, well, first of all, not everybody has a ceiling as high as the ceiling here in my home at the church. You might have a slightly lower ceiling, so we don't want to throw it too high. Also, the higher you throw, the harder it is to aim it well into the other hand. So we want to find a nice, happy medium where we can throw from one hand to the other. I'm hoping all the mums and dads at home are trying this as well. We'll just quickly go on to two. I'm going to go from one hand to the other. So, one hand, the other hand in a nice X shape. A lot of people will do this. They'll go one throw and a pass. A throw and a pass, just like that. And that's a really, really easy way to juggle two objects. But we want to get up to three. So we're going to focus on this X shape when you're practicing. And it doesn't matter which hand goes first. You can go right hand and then left hand, or left hand and right hand. It doesn't matter. The first ball goes up, and as it goes over the top of the hill, it starts to come down the other side. The next ball or object comes up here. And then you catch the first ball. This ball comes up to the top, comes down, and you catch it on the other side. So we're going one, two, just like that. Left, right, right, left. And that's how we juggle two objects. Now, really, really quickly, we're going to look at three. For those of you who've been with us before and have already practiced this, and for any mums, dads, or older brothers and sisters who are joining in as well. Three objects, two hands. So we have to start with two objects in one of our hands. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to start with two objects in my right hand. I'm going to hold one of them down here at the base, one up here on my fingertips, and the other ball is all by itself. When you're juggling three, like we're juggling now, it's always right, left, right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right, left, right, depending on which hand you start in. You always start with the hand that has two objects in it. 
So, one, two, three. Woo! And I drop. Just like that. And drops are okay. Those throws hopefully look really, really clear and similar on you. So if you're having difficulty with the catches like I am, you can just do throws and don't worry about catches. So you can go one, two, three, and drop them down that. Mightn't be the best idea if you're practicing with eggs or you're practicing on a hard surface like this, but we've got a nice soft surface here, so I'm not too bothered about my oranges falling on the floor. If you're worried about things like that, it might be better to use your socks, use your actual juggling balls, or use uh, tennis balls or something you're not too worried about breaking. So, I'm gonna put my sock into there, and put that one over there. Now, one last quick thing before we move on to our acro. We are going to do a little bit of balancing. So, hopefully, you can go and ask your mum or dad to loan you some kitchen utensils, okay? Or you might have some nice peacock feathers over here at home. Sometimes some people have them around. Or you might have found some from a circus party or something like that. And just like anything else, when we're balancing, just like we're balancing our feathers, we always look at the top of the object we're balancing. So Rachel's gonna do with her feather over there. We put it on our palm or our finger, especially if we're learning for the first time. Get it, our object as straight as we can, and then we try and keep our finger, our hand, under the top of that object. And the shorter the object you're trying to balance, the trickier it is to balance. And lighter things are harder to balance as well. Like this is a plastic spatula, so it's a little bit less balanceable than our wooden spoon. And trickiest of all, I've been practicing this for 10 minutes just before we turned the cameras on. A pencil. So, drum roll, please, Jono. Ah, oh, failure. Okay. Obviously, I need to practice that. Jono, put that down on the list. Back bend, feet on head, balancing a pencil on my hand for a little bit longer. Jono, get a better juggling teacher. <laughs> So, boys and girls, we are going to finish up with a little bit of acrobatics. So, myself and Rachel are going to work together for this. We're going to pop our masks on. Um, but obviously you can do this with your mum or dad, or brother or sister, or anybody else who's in your bubble. Now, we'll be back. Okay, so we've got our masks here. This is my nice, lovely, homemade mask. Rachel's got her very fancy one there as well. We are going to do three moves for you today. We're going to do front balance on feet, we're going to do back balance on feet, and then we're going to do front stall as well. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate, demonstrate the moves, and then we're going to take our masks off and just have a little chat about what we've thought about through them. Okay, so while you're watching us, make sure your space is clear and that everybody is nicely warmed up. So, front balance first of all. Okay, boys and girls, that was front balance on feet, or Superman, as some of you have will already know it by. Um, we were just thinking about what we were going to say to you. So, as a base, I'm keeping my back really flat on the floor, pushing my shoulders into the floor. So I've got a nice triangle to support Rachel with, so I'm not rolling from side to side and tipping her over. To balance Rachel, I'm really thinking about pointing and flexing my feet, so I can control how she tips forwards and backwards with my toes. And then my feet are planted on her hip bones. Everybody will have a slightly different point of balance. It just takes a little bit of experimenting to work out. And it's best to have the feet so they're um, parallel on the hip bones and not turned out to the side. As the flyer, I'm trying to make myself as stiff as possible. Because the stiffer I am, the more like a stick I am, the easier it is for Alan to balance me. If I am not engaging, then I'm really floppy, and that's really hard to balance. So I'm really thinking about engaging my core, I'm sque squeezing my glutes, and it also helps if I squeeze my legs together and point my toes when they come off the floor. 
I don't jump up onto uh, Alan's feet. I let him take me down and lift me off. Then, when I feel like we're comfortably balanced, that's when I can release my arms and uh, Alan can control where I go, what I do with his feet and his legs. Yeah. So we were holding hands, weren't we? Yes. So we did a, a nice grip. I had my hands facing upwards, Alan had his hands facing up to the side, like that. Yeah. Excellent. And then Rachel did one of the moves that she demonstrated in her solo move, so that you can link those things together. Always try and have a spotter with you before you try anything more advanced like that. And remember to always take your time. There's no rush with any of this stuff. It's better to go slowly and get it right than to rush into something and fall over and bang your head. Okay, so let's have a look at back balance really quickly. very similar to front balance, all the same points from the base, except rather than hip bones this time, you want to get right on your flyers, glutes, are bum. Uh, Rachel, any other tips for the flyer for back balance? Yep, so I'm holding on to Alan's ankles, and again I'm doing the same things, I'm really trying to uh, engage my glutes, otherwise my back will just flop over his legs, uh, pointing my toes and squeezing my legs together. Um, yeah. And one last little tip, if your flyer has long hair, maybe ask her to tie it up so it doesn't tickle your nose. Oops. Okay, let's do our last move then. Okay, so for front stall, as the base, I'm going to have my feet parallel and about hip width apart. I'm going to do a little sit here. I'm going to present my hands forward to Rachel. And I'm going to put my hands on top so I can push down on them. And we take a nice wrist to wrist grip. Yep. Rachel's going to put one foot up. And it's slightly turned out. And then we'll do a little squeeze and she's going to stand up on me. And then we're both going to lean back <laughs> at the same time with my stretchy shoulders on. Okay, boys and girls, that is our last move for today. We're going to see you all again very soon. Bye! Bye.